Okay, so Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. His, Paul says, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. Now we're going to jump to another scripture, Luke chapter 1, verse 34. Before this, I'm not going to read it. The angel is announcing to Mary the virgin that she's going to be conceived by the Holy Spirit and have, a, and have a child who's going to be the Messiah. Mary responds saying this, How will this be since I don't know a man? Can we pray? Okay, God, we thank you so much. We thank you so much for your presence in this place. We thank you for your word. And God, right now, we just pray. Pray this with me. We open our hearts to you, God. We open our hearts to you, Holy Spirit. Speak to us through your word. We thank you so much for what you want to do today. Bring light to every area in our life that is, that is hindering us, that you want to deal with tonight. We thank you so much that sickness, that sin, that bondage has no place in the presence of God. And tonight we pray, shine your light on every heart, on every life. We thank you, God, so much for the power of your word. We thank you, Holy Spirit, and we ask you to have your way in this service. We want to leave this place changed. We want to leave this place coming to know you in a greater way. We don't want to just hear stuff. We want to experience your presence tonight. And everybody who agrees said. Paul, Paul, being a very educated man, he actually, you know, I don't know if you brag about your resume, but Paul in the Bible brags about his resume. He tells him that I've been taught by the greatest teacher. I'm, a, I'm of the tribe of Benjamin and this and this and that. And I know the law and I, and I fulfill the law. But all of this I count, in our words, as garbage. And I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. Now you think, what does the story of Mary have anything to do with this? Well, the story of Mary is very interesting because when Mary responds to the angel, she, she says, how is this going to happen? I don't even know a man. Now the connection with these two verses, though they're completely opposite, it seems like, the word no is the same exact no in both of these verses. Now what this word no means is a Greek word, um, I'm not going to mess this up, a Greek word that says, that means, if I were to pronounce, Lord help me, ginasko, if I got it wrong, whatever, <laughs> ginasko. Now, before I explain what this word means, can I tell you that today we have too many people that just have head knowledge? Yeah. Maybe this side will react. We got too many people that just have head knowledge. Now, Mary, when the angel spoke to her, he said, you're going to give birth to a child. She responds and says, how is this going to happen? I don't even know a man. Now, can I say that before, before we try to understand sometimes how God works, what God wants to do is he wants us to experience him. Do you know you, you, know, you were never made just to know about God? You were made to experience him. And something that the angel couldn't explain to Mary in detail and something Mary couldn't understand herself, she just needed to experience. <clears throat> now, Paul's saying in the same, in a different verse, Lord, I want to know you and I want to know you more. And what he's saying is, I don't, I don't want to just be informed about you or know you, God, like I know Michael Jordan or know you, God, like I know peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, but God, I want to know you personally. What the word genosco means is to be, is to have knowledge that's grounded on personal experience. See, there's some things that pertain to the things of God that you can't just figure out in your mind. I don't know about you, but I took some time one time, took some time one time, to think about how God has always been, that God has no beginning and no end, that he's always existed. And he said, before the beginning and the foundations of the earth, I've always been. Now, I don't know about you, but when I begin to think about those things, I wanted to sit down because my head started getting too busy. Are you with me? That's because there's some things I just can't understand with my mind, comprehend with my mind, and the reason is God doesn't want me just to be a mindful person. He wants me to experience him. That's why in, the, in Genesis in chapter 1, God placed Adam and Eve in the garden, and guess what? It says God in the cool of the day walked the garden. See, you and I, we were made for experience. 
And I think maybe some of you are having a hard time if you've been coming here or maybe this is your first time. Maybe, you have a, maybe you've had a, a hard history with the church. Is that you've been trying to figure everything thing out in your mind. And that's just not going to happen. There's a lot of things that mentally and me trying to figure everything out that's in the scripture, me trying to figure everything out that I'm seeing in services, that I'm seeing at conference, that I'm seeing, that I'm hearing, it's just not going to make sense. God wants me to experience what I'm seeing. I think like never before we have believers that are so full of knowledge, they're leaving the church. They know everything so much. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1, that knowledge actually puffs you up. Love builds you up. Love cannot be explained. Paul didn't even waste his time. He said, I'm going to get on my knees and pray that you would experience the power of love. You know, one thing that I think is so funny. You know those guys? Those guys that work out like crazy? Everyone's looking at somebody. My brother, I love you. The biggest guy here. But they don't just work out because they're trying to be healthy. They work out. It's those guys that do the muscle stuff. You know the muscle shows? They spend so much time working out, and it's just for a minute to come onto a stage and just do a little, <laughs> and to show everybody what they got. But most of you that maybe don't even work out that much per could probably do more with your body than that person. And not only that, you could probably run faster than him, be more effective in life, but he looks good. <laughs> See, what we need today is not people that know it all and are puffed up with knowledge, but people that are effective, people that are grounded, people that maybe don't make sense with everything they're saying, but they have an experience that they're standing on. Some of the things maybe that you're, you're trying to figure out with your mind, just ask God, God, I want to experience what I'm seeing, but I'm not understanding. And maybe the reason you're not understanding it is because God wants to raise up a hunger and a desire in you to experience what you don't understand. We were made to experience God. We were not made to just be informed. You know, I almost... Sometimes almost every person you ask on the street, do you know Jesus? Yeah, I know him. <laughs> what? Do you really know him? Or are you just informed of him? Because to know him, according to my Bible, is a transformed life. To know him is a transformed attitude, is a transformed character, is a, transform, is a transformed appearance, is a transformed uh, language, is a transformed walk, a talk, an action. There's a transformed life when we come to know Jesus because the word know is to experience him in our life. How will this happen, Mary says, since I don't, since, since I don't know a man? 1 Corinthians 2.2, Paul says again, I resolved to know nothing except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Can we talk about two people? We're going to talk about a few people in the Bible. And we're going to see the difference of somebody that has been grounded in experience, Genosco, and somebody that just has some head knowledge of who God is and what he can do. You know, there's a story about Saul, or the life of Saul, we'll say. The life of Saul, the latter part of his life, things kind of start falling apart. But have you noticed when you look at the life of Saul, one thing that begins to happen, I'm going to make this easy, there's three Ps that he has. Possessions, a lot of it. Power, a lot of it. And position. He's the king of Israel. He owns more than you and I could fathom or count. And he has been given power by God to be the king. But when things start falling apart in his life, what I had noticed is that he began to chase the possessions and the power and the position instead of the presence of God. Have there been seasons in your life as a believer where there is stuff, there is position, there is something you're running after that begins to distract you from the presence of God in your life? See, Saul was this man. 
When things start falling apart, he felt it slipping through his fingers. And what he began to do is this, instead of chasing God in his presence, he began to chase his possessions. He began to chase his power. He began to chase his position. And he even chased the future king. Man, he knew about God. But David, in his life, when we know he commits sin and has probably a very dark time in his life, there's a phrase that David says that blew me away. He says, Lord, you can do anything you want to me, but don't take away your presence. Somebody had knowledge of God, but that knowledge was grounded in experience. And that experience of the knowledge that he had of God drove him to want more of God's presence. And even when he began to lose his kingdom, when he, began, when he understood God right now, because of what I've done, could take everything away, he was okay with it being taken away because the presence of God was more important than the other piece. But for Saul, it wasn't. See, Saul maybe knew God. We see Saul was blessed by God in the beginning of his life. But there was some stuff that got more important than the presence. And sometimes when that happens, you begin to chase those things instead of the presence of God in your life. And that becomes dangerous. Our next person is Job. Job. Man, when I read Job, I want to cry. <laughs> no joke. Having a kid now, having a little bit more than I had before I left my parents' house, you know, amen. <laughs> having my own stuff. And we you read the story of Job. I don't know if you've ever, ever got a phone call and got some bad news. Yeah? Or nobody here. Wow. <laughs> the city of angels. <laughs> but Job, you wouldn't believe, didn't have an iPhone or emailing, but he had messengers that came his way. And in one moment, in one moment of his life, he had a messenger that showed up to his house and said, hey, Job, he's probably, you know, he's probably barely breathing. He was just running a long distance. He's sweating. He looks scary. And he's saying, Job, all your servants were killed. And the Bible says before he even got done telling the message of bad news to Job, the next messenger already came. It's like, you know, you're on the phone, some, some, something just happened, and then a call waiting, something happened again, and then a text message, something happened, and then an email, and then an Instagram post. Something just kept happening to him. And before the second guy was done talking about him losing all of his, uh, all of his stuff, like his cattle and his sheep, uh, the third messenger comes and says, hey, I got more bad news. Over here, the rest of your stuff also got taken. Some army broke in. They, they killed everybody, and they took all your stuff, and they dragged it away. And before that person was done talking, the next messenger came in and said, hey, your family, they all got together for a party, in the, and there was, a, there was a, some kind of wind or something happened, and the roof of the place, Lord, keep this roof up, the roof of the place came down, and it killed every, every, all your kids. And the Bible says, when the first messenger came, that he already was... He already was about to start tearing his clothes and asking God why. And then the second, and then the third, and then the fourth. Now, when all his peas get taken away, we go to the next step. And maybe you've been in this kind of season in your life where sickness came into his life. Now, when sickness came, came into his life, the Bible says that it was kind of hard to look at him. He had, he had, he had sores and, and pretty scary stuff all over his body. Now, it gets even worse, husbands. All he had by his side was his wife. But his wife, in that breaking point of his, of his journey, his wife, instead of speaking life and encouraging him, his wife says, you foolish man, won't you just curse God and die? Look what God did to you in our family. And you know what he says? No, husbands, don't do this. He says, foolish woman. <laughs> don't say that. Do not do that. I tried. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> That's why she's not here. No, I'm kidding. You foolish woman. 
God can give. Hello. And God can take away. You cannot begin to comprehend with your mind what is going on in my life and why. See, it shows me that Job was not just on the level of his mindset of, I know of God and I know who God is. But he was grounded in something personal, in something intimate, in something Mary's talking about. I've never been with a man. I've never had intimacy with a man. Well, Job had some kind of intimacy with his God. And when he was going through hell and back into hell, probably again and back, and he was losing everything, even his health, he stayed faithful. He wasn't moved by everything that was happening in his life and saying, God, that's it, man. I'm done with you. I was faithful to you. I served you. I've been in church for so long, and look what happened to me. No. If God can give me, God can take away from me. Somebody was Janosko. Somebody was grounded in some serious personal experience with God to say, God can take away. We have a fairy tale ending. He gets double everything he had. But how often in, we're in that moment going through half as much, a tenth as much, just a percent of much, and saying, God, where are you at? What's going on, Lord? Is this supposed to happen to me? Would you allow those moments not to drive you away, but to drive you closer? Would you allow those moments in your life? Maybe you have sickness in this place and God's going to heal you. Would you allow that not to push you away from him, to push you to him? Man, I got a repeating problem in my life. I can't get over this addiction. I can't. Would, it, would it allow you, please, to drive you to know him more? Not to say, God, why, God, why, God, why? Often when we're pushed away by the things that are happening in our life, it's just a symbol to us, a sign to us, a, a warning sign. You got to know him more. You know, I visited the earlier part of this year. I had to be at a funeral of a very good friend. Man, I had a hard season uh, beginning of this year. I was, Bryson, I just imagine this, bro. I, I, pull up, I pull up to speak to our interns. Pull up, pull up to the church to speak to our interns, and I get, I get a phone call. I get bad news. And my, my sister says, hey, did you hear? And I'm like, oh, you know that everything just starts happening in your mind. And I'm like, what happened? She's like, Stephen. I'm like, Stephen who? Stephen Reed. And it didn't click to me. I knew him, but it didn't click to me that actually something would happen to him. He's the craziest, passionate, off the wall guy. And I'm like, there's no, there's no way he's dead. He's that guy. That guy flies. She's like, hey, he 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 passed away last last night. And I'm like, what? I'm like, send me a picture that you are not mistaken on who this is because there's no way he's dead. And I just want to make sure you're, you don't got it mixed up. And she sent me a picture, and sure enough, it was him. You know, the crazy thing is I had to end up teaching. It was really hard. I wanted to cry like seven times <laughs> during my teaching. Um, when I went to the viewing of his body, his body was wrapped up. He died in a motorcycle accident. You couldn't. They didn't want you to look at his body because it was too beat up. Um, they just had his hand out. So you could touch his hand if you wanted to, but the rest of his body was, was messed up. And his dad shared something at the end of that service. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm, I'm all over the place. I'm crying. I'm wondering why this happened. He was passionate about God. He was faithful to God. He was an example to so many believers. He was an example to me. And his dad begins to share at the end of the funeral service. He says, my wife and I have been praying. It's been a hard time for us, of course. He said, my wife and I have been praying. And we both received the same thing from God, and we shared to each other. And I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to hear what he's, what he's going to say. He says, my wife and I came to this conclusion. If the death of our son, Stephen, we can't get through 
It's just a sign to us we don't know him enough. And the father, his son, this gets worse. Don't, I hope there's not, if, if you need to shed some tears, go ahead. His son turned 30 the next day. He had a, he had a girl from the area of, no crying. Um, he was a man of God. So we knew if he, was, if he was seeing a girl or talking to a girl that it was serious. There's no way no girl's going to waste his time. Apostle Paul, bro. I'm like, if he found somebody, he found somebody. And that weekend, he was going to have a birthday party Friday night. This happened on Wednesday. He was going to have a birthday party on Friday night. He was going to show this girl that he met that he was for sure wanted to marry. And he was going to show her to his parents. Now, when you hear that from a dad, if we can't get through this, it's simply because we don't know him enough. You understand that knowing him is not just something you have here. Isn't it interesting that Adam and Eve ate of the tree of what? Knowledge of good and evil and were separated from the presence of God. Hmm. See, in the presence of God, you have all that you need. And when the craziest things happen in your life that don't make sense, his presence will make sense to you. Apostle Paul, and this is going to be our last guy, Apostle Paul, who we quoted in the beginning. Actually, I will read the scripture. He says, man, I knew so much. And isn't it interesting that before... Apostle Paul, who was Saul, encountered Christ. He was actually working against God. See, sometimes we know so much that the knowledge we have actually doesn't push us to know God more. It pushes us away. And it doesn't actually work for our benefit to knowing God. It actually works against God himself. Paul says, who was Saul, said, he said, I know more than most of you. But we see Saul before his encounter with Christ actually, what? Persecuting Christ. It says he was zealous for the Lord, but he was killing believers because he was so zealous about following the law. He encounters, he encounters Jesus on the road to interns. Interns on the road to Damascus. Come on, you learned this this week. On the road to Damascus, Saul is encountered by Jesus. After his encounter with Jesus, here we go. Genesco happened because his knowledge, which was pushing him away from God, turned into an encounter where he got grounded, where he had personal experience, where he came to know just not who he is, but who he is right in front of me. I see him. I have heard his voice. I have experienced his presence. His presence was actually so bright and strong. It knocked me down and I was blinded because it was so bright. Something happened to me because of the presence of God. And after that moment, it says he goes to the city, he receives his sight, and he begins to preach the gospel the very next day. He experienced what he thought he knew for so long. And because of his experience, not because of his knowledge, because of his experience, it propelled him to now live for the Lord. And to be probably one of the greatest instruments that the first era saw, writing majority of the New Testament, not because he knew it all, but because he had an encounter. And that encounter gave him a platform to now begin to do something for God. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14, this is what Paul says. And it's a prayer for us. He says, for this reason, I kneel before the Father. What is he going to kneel for? Watch this. From whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit 
in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And look what he begins to pray. I pray that you, all of you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love. And that's the same know that we've been talking about. Genesco. To have a personal experience. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge. That you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. There's something that happens when we experience Him in our life. I knew about God growing up all my life. I grew up in church. But when I was 18, far from God, living a worldly life, I was in the back during worship and God began to encounter me with his love. And for the first time in my life, I had an experience that I heard often that I knew about. I had an experience. And that experience changed and wrecked and transformed my life. As we close, we're going to pray. There was something incredible that happened when I married my wife. Well, something incredible that happened to her. Because she married me. Just kidding. When she said yes to me and married me, just like a year later, I finally got a revelation. You know, when she said yes and became my wife, she took upon my last name without doing anything but saying yes. Know that you are a step away from receiving everything God has for you by saying yes tonight. your last name is sickness maybe the last name you've been carrying is guilt regret fear one of the first things Adam said to God when he was separated from the presence is God I'm hiding because I'm afraid I'm afraid why are you afraid Adam you were made for my presence were made for this guys girls all of you you were made to experience God in your life you were made not just to have something right here saying yeah I've heard of him I know about him pastor Vlad and Ilya and everybody they talk about him you can encounter him by saying yes and his name can become your name tonight his healing that he has for you can be your healing his breakthrough can be your breakthrough his deliverance can be your deliverance you can be grounded tonight if you felt like you've been tossed back and forth by life you can be grounded not because everything's making sense and coming together but God I just know I need your presence right now God I need to know your presence my life is not making sense my situation is not making sense this week didn't make sense but God right now like Job and God like Saul who became Paul and God like David